I don't know exactly how, but I really feel like the Boston Celtics have gone under the radar recently. Them falling just short of a historic comeback in the NBA Finals with, listen, obviously we're going to say Denver now, but the best roster in basketball in many people's minds, including my own leading up to the playoffs, definitely contributes to this. But they also swung a major trade that I think many people are underrating. I know Boston loves Marcus Smart and Chris Haps Porzingis is widely thought of as not that good. But as a Philadelphia 76ers fan, I can promise you I would much rather Boston had kept smart. Let's get into this deal and how I think it will impact Boston moving forward. Losing a vocal leader who was crucial both on and off the court for not only the duration of his own career, but also that of pretty much all your starters is obviously tough. While I do like Smart's game, I think many Boston fans would agree there's times where he's taking shots that you might rather one of your stars be trying. But let me talk about Chris Saps Porzingis. The peaks and valleys of his career is kind of funny, from being hated by New York on draft night to their savior, back to being hated by them and then having an injury riddled subpar run with Dallas. Last year with Washington, I think Porzingis really rebuilt his game. Yes, they weren't contending, but this team still featured other 20 point scorers in Bradley Beal and Kyle Kuzma. And it's not like Chris Saps was just chucking and being inefficient. Obviously his role will be much different in Boston, but this is another aspect that scares me. Not only will Porzingis be a third offensive option, but this will also allow him to focus more on defense. I didn't think it could get worse by essentially being guarded by Tatum on the perimeter, then being met by Horford, and then you have Robert Williams sliding over to help. But of course, Brad Stevens just wants to torture me, so he goes and gets an athletic 7'3 guy who's going to be playing power forward. Now, the big concern, which I understand with Porzingis, is obviously injury. I do get that, but Boston did also get back two first-round picks in this deal. And I feel like if there's any perspective you should accept on a trade as a Boston fan, I think that of a Sixers fan who is on your side, you know, just maybe should be it. As for the rest of the offseason, Boston did lose Grant Williams, which is kind of tough, but you guys were clearly better off not paying him, especially considering the Jalen Brown situation, which I will get into. But Boston did get a more than competent replacement in O'Shea Brissett, and Jordan Walsh looks like he might be pretty solid. Even though Smart is gone, a Brogdon White Brown Pritchard guard rotation is still elite and versatile, and some wing depth was lost as well, but I think this move could be the one that puts Boston over the hump. Keeping Robert Williams and Al Horford while also adding an all-star level big will be a lot better than many think. Boston has had some decent big men during the Tatum Brown era, notably and it's, I'm, I'm playing, I'm playing, but notably a younger Horford, but this Boston team has never had a star level big with the offensive package of a Chris Saps Porzingis. Porzingis was also extended at a rate of two years and 30 million per, which I think is obviously, you know, it, it's a little risky if he gets hurt, obviously, but I think it is a very solid price should he stay healthy. Chris Saps is coming off his best and most healthy season since his ACL injury, and while his numbers will inevitably dip because of the team he's playing with, his impact, notably defensively, could be amplified by this situation as well. The other lingering aspect of Boston's offseason is Jalen Brown's potential near $300 million Supermax extension. This is a really interesting situation to me because Jalen is absolutely a max player and many other teams would be lining up to give him this extension, but I can understand being wary about potentially paying this guy $70 million in a few years. Again, because JB is only 26, I completely understand not wanting to move him for someone like a Damian Lillard if that were even in the cards, but I think Boston may take a long look at this as they should with such a large commitment. As a rival fan, I am pretty grateful that Boston will 90% not be getting Dame because, man, if healthy, I really think if Boston got Dame, they should have those next two championships locked up. A Lillard, White, Tatum, Porzingis, Williams lineup really, really scares me, but again, this isn't happening because of Boston both appearing to be leaning towards extending JB and Dame expressing his lack of desire to play in Boston. But one scenario that I don't think has been considered is one where Jalen feels disrespected in negotiations and demands a trade. While I don't think this happened, the Celtics and Jalen Brown even entering negotiations and not just sliding the Supermax over brings this into play. Obviously, there's other factors to negotiate and not just the money, but things could get complicated here. In this scenario, I think we see a bidding war of at least 5, if not up to, you know, maybe 10 or potentially even 12 to 15 teams. Many teams would be in the market for a 26-year-old All-NBA player. If this doomsday scenario occurs, depending on the return, I don't think it necessarily completely takes Boston out of title contention this year, but it would obviously lessen their chances this year, pretty much no matter what they get back. But if they were to accept a package from someone like the Knicks, who have been mentioned in every star trade scenario known to man, including Joel Embiid, and by the way, man, if you're a Knicks fan watching this video, I don't know if Daryl Morey is trading James Harden for anyone on your roster not named Jalen Brunson, so just don't even get your hopes up if you're a Knicks fan with Joel Embiid. Like, you're, like, like you're, you're not, like, no. Like, I'm sorry, like, no. Like, like y'all have a lot of picks, and y'all have a package that I think could get you a guy like a Jalen Brown or a guy like on that level. 
you're not going to be like, if, say, you know, and be Luca asks out. You're not going to be in those conversations. I'm really, 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 really sorry, Knicks fans. But uh, you're just not going to be in that conversation. But as I was saying, if Boston did get a package somewhere along the lines of, you know, maybe, I mean, it'd probably be RJ Barrett for salary reasons and just a ton of first round picks. I think there's definitely a scenario where they're in a better spot five years from now with, you know, five first round picks or something rather than paying Jalen Brown 70 million. But again, as I said, Jalen is absolutely a max player and keeping him around is definitely a good move and probably the right move. But things really could get complicated here. And Boston fans, if they do, if stuff goes downhill, I really don't like, again, Brad C. I I hate Brad Stevens. I, I, man, I, I, I hate y'all. But just, I mean, listen, I'd understand. I, I'd be mad too, you know what I mean? If, you know, losing a guy like JB, losing a guy like that, especially, you know what I mean? Personally, I don't, again... I mean, I have no actual, like, issue with R.J. Barrett, but I just don't like his game very much. And, you know, if I replace, you know, Jalen Brown with R.J. Barrett, pretty much no matter the pick capital, you know, I, I can understand wanting to be, you know, you know, just a, just a little bit ticked off. But, you know, if this scenario does occur where Jalen's like, man, like, y'all aren't just sliding the Supermax, like, I feel disrespected, get me out of here. I think there is a scenario where Boston comes out better on the other end. To wrap this up, I do think the best team in the NBA on paper just got better, and now their 35-year-old head coach, who is two years younger than Al Horford, has a year of deep playoff experience under his belt. There is still dust to be settled, obviously, with the Dame trade, Harden trade. I mean, the Harden trade probably won't affect... I mean, it will affect Boston as you have, you know, someone getting out of the East, but, uh, you know, it won't affect Boston as, you know, I, I don't think, you know, James is going to Milwaukee or anything crazy unless something crazy... You know what I mean? Just pops up, but I don't think that's happening. Obviously, you have, you know, the Dame trade where he's probably going to Miami. And honestly, if he goes to Miami, I would feel inclined to, you know, have them over Boston, you know, just on a on paper rating. I mean, Dame Jimmy Bam is serious. Like, I'm not going to lie. Again, I as I've been saying, I think Tatum Brown Porzingis could be just as serious, you know, especially if you have, you know, maybe Jalen Brown gets a left hand. You got, uh, you know, I mean, Tatum, he's only 25, still going up, more experience. You know, again, I do I think, you know, if we get Heat Celtics once again in the Eastern Conference Finals or in the second round or something, I think either team could, you know, win that, even if, you know, the Heat do get Dame. But, you know, obviously, again, we, we, have, we have a lot of stuff that's probably going to happen between now and the start of the next year. And a wild card, listen, I mean, I, I wouldn't, you know, I'd put the Hawks if they got Siakam in that next tier, you know, probably with like Philly and Cleveland. You know, I probably wouldn't put them in that Boston-Milwaukee tier. But I'm not going to lie to you, y'all. Um, if they get Siakam and something crazy happens, again, obviously I'm not... I mean, they took Boston to six last year. Obviously, I'm not taking them over Miami, Bucks, Celtics, or even probably Philly. But Trey Young, again, I mean, it pro you know, Trey Young, DeJounte Murray, potentially, I mean, it depends if they just give up picks or not. But Trey Young, DeJounte Murray... DeAndre Hunter, Pascal Siakam, and Onyeka Okongwu or Clint Capella could be a problem. I'm not going to lie. It really, 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 really could be a problem. And I know, again, I, I feel like Trey Young is vastly underrated. I, I mean, y'all, I mean, again, Sixers fans and Celtics fans, I mean, y'all didn't lose to Atlanta, but y'all saw, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I know they had y'all sitting there like, yo, like, what's going on right now? Because they had me sitting there like, yo, what's going on right now? Because that's, I mean, I thought that was a sweep, but... You know, just a little wild card I'm throwing out at the end there. If that move does happen, because, you know, I mean, that has been rumored. Don't I, And, I mean, someone's going to go to the comments and be like, oh, my God, are you serious? Bro, a, a little bit. I'll put it that way. I'm a little bit serious. I'm a little bit serious. I think, you know, again, there's so many things that go into winning an NBA championship, and this is what people don't realize. Like, if there's a scenario where Atlanta plays Boston with Siakam and, you know, Brogdon's hurt, some other guys are banged up, like, shit happens. I'll put it that way. Shit happens in the NBA. And there's, you know, what I mean, like, uh, you know, like, uh, and even like Cleveland, you got, you know, what I mean, like, again, right, like Mobley going up, Garland going up, Mitchell still probably not at his peak. Again, you know, I, I think the league is going to be very, very interesting last year. Obviously, you have your tier one contenders, which I would consider to be Milwaukee and Boston. Honestly, I might put Boston and I mean, and Miami if they get Dame, even if they don't get Dame, but I might put Boston in a tier of their own, you know, with Miami without Dame. I'm not gonna lie, but. Good little tangent at the end of the video, as I normally do. The versatility and defense of this team, combined with the already great offense, plus a 7'3 dynamic scorer, is a recipe for disaster for the rest of the NBA. If y'all enjoyed this one, please like it up, sub to the channel, turn on that noti bell, comment any video ideas down below. I am always listening, and yeah, I'm out. Peace.